Story Chat with John Fornoff, the art and passion of storytelling. Here's your host, Brian Bullabush. Well, welcome everyone to Story Chat, uh, where we talk about the art and passion of storytelling. And man, I can't tell you how excited I am to have our special guest with us today. And um, it is, I'll just jump right in, it's Phil Lawler. Who uh, he co-created Adventures in Odyssey, Jungle Jam. He worked on Little Dog and Prairie. He's done so much, written so much, and uh, Phil is just just a master at the craft. And uh, just Phil, it's great to just have you on the show. Thank you, man. Well, you're very welcome. I I, I appreciate your inviting me, and I appreciate being here. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to our conversation. Amen. Amen. Well, we were um, you and I were t- at Lamplighter for the Lamplighter Guild. Yes, and you're, yeah, you're a couple teaching- of weeks back. Yes, yes. And uh, I remember I just I just wanted to just chat with you about story. And yeah. we're in that little library there amongst the books <laughs> and stuff. And we started talking. And I'm thinking, I am thoroughly enjoying this conversation. And I would like, I would love, it'd be cool if I had the story chat people or the people who listen and, and watch story chat to be part of this. It's like, this is like golden stuff. And I, I wrote down notes and stuff. Which is just <laughs> a great exchange. It's a lot sure. of fun. And I thought, well, let's let's yeah, let's let's put it in the podcast. So we're not recreating what we do there. We're just kind of go with the flow here. But it's such a joy just 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 converse with you on that. Just just about yeah. story. That was just a lot well, of fun. story is you know story is what I do. Story is where where I live. Story is where we all live. That's that's part of the conversation that we had. Uh, story is kind of is you know you you go through life and you try to figure out what it is that you're supposed to do. You know that that's that's part of who we are as Christians too. Is we have to try to figure out what it is that God wants us to do, what it is that we want to we're supposed to be doing, what he's what he's created us to do, and and I don't know if anybody any of us ever really get a complete handle on that. I think that he creates us to do a lot of things, mm-hmm. but um, but but I think that when you have some sort of an epiphany in your own life about things, that you really start you know the the line the great line when Harry met Sally is when you when you meet the person that you want to spend the rest of your life with, you want the rest of your life to start as soon as possible. Uh, and so that's that's the thing. So when you when you find out when you find out what it is that 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 you're supposed to do, when you find out what it is that 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 God wants you to do, and 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 you you're really pretty sure about this thing. Um, then you want the rest of your life to start as soon as possible. So let's let's get let's get going with it. Let's see how fast we can get going with it. I think that's a that's a really that was a really that's I love I love I love when movies do that. You know, movies will 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 movies, television shows, books, everything will sometimes the authors will take uh, little lines and they think it's a clever line, but they don't think it's any deeper than than that. And then they just the line. You know, it was meant to be a laugh or it's meant to be clever at the moment. And they don't realize that sometimes how how profound. They have actually made that line to be how, how actually how profound that that line can actually be to, to people and in, in their lives. So um, story that. is, you know, that's that's exactly what we try to do with story. Yeah. Story, yeah. Have to try to make people see the deeper, the deeper issues, the bigger picture. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, uh, Phil, it's interesting because uh, you and I worked together with Odyssey when I was uh, back there, when I was working there from I guess I worked from started in 97 up to 05 but during that period you were um a prominent producer in that time and just it's just, it's a joy working with you on the show and you came with the idea of the writer's room and yeah. and all that stuff just really just enjoyed that that interaction and um but uh, one thing I just, just writing for Odyssey we, you and I were talking about this in another conversation about how Odyssey starts so it's so going to be about how Odyssey started and how that's like what these stories are doing for people but um i remember uh, telling you what what a joy it was to write for the show uh mm-hmm. one of the things i loved i just love working for, for all the characters and all that but one thing is unique about this show that i love when you tune in to it and the same thing when you write for it you never know what you're gonna get you never know what yeah. you're gonna get it's like it's all these genres you've got a mystery and then you've got a slice of life then you've got a wild variety show and then you've got slapstick comedy and then you've got this deep drama and then you have this intriguing spy mis- it's like all this you never know it's got all these yeah. genres and yeah. uh tell us a little bit about about the variety with odyssey and tell us about like how it started what was your what was the germination of that what was, um, what was the thing that was grabbing you when you the thing that the it. thing that happened at, at the very beginning, because I was hired at Focus on the Family to to um, facilitate the growth of audio drama, mm-hmm. they had done some audio dramas before they before that two two or three I think maybe three of them they had done prior to my being hired. Steve Harris did uh, I think he wrote all three of them, and um, and he had Hal Smith on and he had Chuck Bolte on a couple of them. And and uh, and they decided that they really wanted to do more of this sort of thing. I mean, there's a whole 
I've told the history many times, but there's a whole, um, Dr. Dobson had, a had, uh, Bruce Wilkinson, I think it was on the program. And, uh, and, and they were talking about the state of the culture and how bad things were. I mean, even back then, that's only 40 years ago and the culture was bad. The culture is even worse now. Yeah. Um, but, but, uh, uh, they said, he said, he said, it's not enough. Bruce Wilkinson said, it's not enough for us to just to cry how bad the culture is without providing any alternative. Yeah. Um, you know, young people, especially kids need to have, need to have their imaginations peaked and they need to, they need to have things that they can turn to. And, and then he said, yeah, focus on the family is uniquely positioned to be able to provide that. And um, so uh, that kind of set things off, that kind of uh, sort of lit the fire, as, as so to speak. And so some dramas were made at, at Focus and, and aired on the, on the Focus broadcast. And then I was hired and I came on to, to actually facilitate creating drama, ongoing drama. Mm-hmm. And the first thing I wanted to do, because I really loved old time radio, I wanted to yeah. do something that was much more variety oriented. I really wanted to do kind of a variety show. That's um, what you're telling me. It was like Odyssey originally was yeah. thinking about it was a variety show, which kind of I really this that that was what later became BTV. I mean, yes, I really yeah, wanted yeah. to do. I, so I, I got I got my wish. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but but Steve, to his, in his wisdom, and and he was right about this, said no. I think we really need to do a narrative storytelling. We need to do narrative storytelling. Um, so, uh, we went back and forth on that for a while and then we finally said, okay, all right, well, we'll, we'll, we'll figure out what we're going to do here. And, and because he had worked with Hal Smith, he really wanted to put Hal in the show. He really wanted to make that yeah. part of the, part of everything. And so we thought, okay, well, what, what can we do? So I, I started, I just started from there. I started from scratch and said, basically, here, here we go. Let's, let's see, maybe it's a town. Um, I had gone to my brother's wedding, uh, around a, a couple of years prior to this and, uh, it was up in the Marin County near San Francisco, and uh, a, a church that they had up there. And and one of the uh, and while I, while I was there, uh, we went walking. And I went walking around the pier, and I went you know all all over the place. And and I came across a, a bookstore that I thought was just the best thing in the world because it was a bookstore where you could buy a cup of coffee and a scone and get a book right off the shelf and read it right, right there. And it had couches, and it was like it was like a pre. Starbucks, Starbucks, way, way before that, way, way before that. But it was yeah. just such a great place. The atmosphere was all about reading and conversation. Oh, yeah. And it was just so, it was an old fashioned Victorian kind of house, you know, and there was book, there were books everywhere. You could buy them or you could just take one off the shelf and start reading it with a nice cup of coffee and have a conversation with people about it. But that's just great. I love that idea. I love the idea of that. And, and, uh, and it was, it was so much, I, you've, it's one of those places where you feel like I, I belong here. This is where I yes. belong. You know? Yes. And, yeah. and, uh, um, uh, so, so I thought, well, if I ever get a chance to, to do anything with that, whether it's open up a shop like that on my own, or uh, whether it's putting that in a, in a, in a, in a, a series in some way, I want to do that. So that, that, that really was the spark that became what's in that really was the spark that I became never heard that that's awesome. yeah, that, that 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 started blossoming and i started thinking okay how is that gonna and it was really more for just books and it was really more for that kind of conversation and and and, and more heady stuff at first and then it was like well we have to expand this out we have to make this for everybody we have to make this for the family and then we have to kind of narrow the focus down to really what we want to do is remember we want to our, our target audience is going to be like nine to 12 year olds. And so we would really want to kind of focus on what kids would be doing. So how does that expand? How do we do that? Well, we got this old Victorian place and it could be this wonderful place that, that much like the, much like it says in the Chronicles of Narnia with a little sh- sh- shack in the last battle, uh, the inside is bigger than the outside, you know, it's like <laughs> Snoop dog house. We in fact, yes. I think Paul McCusker was the one who said that at the very, he's I always think about Wits is being like Snoopy's doghouse. It's just huge on the inside. It's this little doghouse on the outside. <laughs> it's huge. And so, uh, so, so we've, I, I try to figure out how to make that happen. What do I want in this thing? How do I want, um, what do I want the character to be? What do I want the main character to be? Who do I want him to be? And a lot of that I drew from my dad. Uh, a lot of what, a lot of what Wit became was stuff that I drew on my dad, my dad's history. And, you know, the whole, this is, <laughs> It's really going to date everything, but it's just like World War II. You know, my dad fought in World War II, and yeah. I'm of that generation where, where it's it's our it's our parents who fought that, not our parent, not our grandparents or great grandparents, in the case of my granddaughter. But but uh, but uh, but you know, my my dad actually was first firsthand experience as far as that's concerned. So wow. a lot of that went into the character of Wit. A lot of that went into the to to the surrounding towns. Yeah. 
My dad oh, was if I, very if small town. You, you might be already going there, but like, what yeah. aspects of your dad's personality worked into it? What, what are some well, uh, he, I mean, he was very he was a very knowledgeable guy. He was uh, my dad was he was he was um, he he was he actually he actually uh, got a degree in psychology. But yeah. his, but his, uh, but he never did. He never went into that field. He he uh, was of the generation that says work is work, and 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 it's all physical. It's manual labor. Mm -hmm. That's what you do. You know, psychology, this psychology thing. You're in your head. That's not work. Um, it's work is work. You know, it's like Red yeah. Foreman on the, that '70s show. Work is work. <laughs> and and so, um, so he was. So he worked. He worked for the Southern Pacific Railroad for all of his career. He he was a he was a uh, he did various things for the railroad. So there there's the trains right there. There's that's where the trains came into. Oh oh awesome trains. awesome. Um, so and then my dad liked inventions and he liked comedy and he loved to laugh and he loved you know he just had lots of stories that he would tell about his youth. He grew up in a small town really small town called Wayne, Oklahoma. And, uh, and, and just some of the stories that he used to tell about growing up there, uh, were, were just great. We're just fantastic. Oh. And when we would go on vacations to see my grandmother still lived there, when we go on vacations to see my grandparents who were both there, um, it was, we just had the blast, you know, you know, running around farm country and running around. And it was, it was very much a Tom Sawyer existence oh. that, that we, that, that kids today would have no clue about at all. You know, I mean, they, they wouldn't be able to do some of the things that, that we did when we were young at all, because, because we have too many regulations and laws and people who want to just kill what freedom kids have. Now. Um, but, um, so we just had we had a blast. A lot of that went into it. A lot of his stories went into who Wit became. Yeah, um, and and of course the of course his the believing side of Wit, the the Christian side of Wit, uh, very much was my dad. He came. He was he was part of that too. Um, oh. That 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 all became part of Wit. So yeah, it all it all just kind of you know, and yeah. I just kind of wrote it, wrote it, wrote it, and I take it what I wrote all day long over to Steve. And at the end of the day, we would go back and forth and back and forth and hash it out and hash it out. And he'd write some stuff. And then I take it and I'd hash it out and we'd hash it out and hash it out. And, uh, uh, and then finally we came up with family portraits. That was the first, that was the first, um, uh, uh, iteration of Odyssey. Yeah. It was all still took place at Odyssey. There was still wits in, but still uh, all of that stuff was there. It's just, we called the, we called the, the, the series family portraits. It was 13 episodes uh, that aired on the Focus broadcast in 1987, at the beginning wow. of the year. We started the we started mm -hmm. in January and went to went through the end of March. A quick, quick really interruption, just, hey, Bill. Yeah, just, yeah. Quick, quick interruption, just just very quick. It's like I'm I'm enjoying this. I'm, I'm additional writing for. I'm an Odyssey fan too. It's like yeah. I, just, I love writing for the show, but I'm also a fan. And just, I'm just like, oh, this is stuff I haven't heard, heard before. One thing, uh, just as an Odyssey, it's, I guess more of the fan part of me. I remember just relating to what you're you're talking about. What your dad was an inspiration was the inspiration for Wit. I remember opening up a file at, at, uh, at in in the in the office there, and opened it up. It's like it's like the archives. It's like opening up the old. <laughs> and I looked back through there, and I found like the original story. This stuff you wrote about yeah. Wit in his backstory, and I won't yeah. divulge all the stuff I saw. But it's like, ooh, this is all the stuff that we necessarily don't we not necessarily will see. But it's like his background, where did he come from, yeah. what he where he worked, the little notch in his ear, all all. all the, it's like it's like. This is cool stuff. It's like I was, yeah. I was I was reading what you wrote about Wit and about when you're first coming up with the character. It was just so fascinating to see what 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 parts were put in there, what parts are still in the background. Yeah, it was just yeah. Fascinating. yeah. Well, and that that was all part of it. One of the things that I really um, uh, liked was uh, the research part of it, and I still still like that a, a great deal. But it, it, one of my favorite writers from early television and from uh, motion pictures was a guy named Patty Chevsky. And um, he wrote, um, he would write for Playhouse 54. And yes. nobody's going to know what that is. But you, you, I mean, we old timers know yeah, what yeah. that is. But young people are not going to know what that is. It's an early anthology series on television, one of the earliest television anthology series. And he wrote some great stuff for, for that. And then he, write, he, wrote, he wrote the films uh, Hosp The Hospital and Network. Oh, yes, that's right. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And when he wrote, he, he whenever he would be uh, uh, interviewed, uh, he would talk about how he, what his writing process was like. And he, he said that before he ever wrote anything, a word of the script for the hospital or for the network, uh, he had to create the whole history of the hospital and the ne network is about a television news network. Yes. He created the whole history of it, all of the history of it, right from its inception all the way through to like right now. And and um, and then he did the same thing for the hospital. 
And he said, I have to know everything there is to know about this, about this. Otherwise, how can I tell the story? I can't, yes, yeah. I can't tell the story about it if I don't know everything about it. Um, it's not that I'm going to use everything, but I have to create the whole history, the whole background and everything. So that way I know where I want to take this, um, yes. where I want it to go and and what the reaction is going to be because I have all the history. I have it all in, in the back of my head. And, and that's, I thought that that's right. That's absolutely right. That just, that felt so right. L years later, of course, that's exactly what I teach in my courses too, is that yeah. you have to know this stuff. You have to know this stuff um, backwards and forwards. If, if you don't know what your own characters are, if you don't know what the research is, if you don't know what your whole series is about, how can you, how can you possibly write for it? How can you tell other people what it's about? Yes. Yeah. And so, so Odyssey, that's, that's kind of the background of Odyssey too, is I, I, that, that was what I spent, <clears throat> I spent a lot of my day doing was just creating the whole history of Odyssey, creating mm -hmm. the whole history of back, background and history of John Avery Whitaker and his family and where he came from. And speaking of that, speaking of background. Oh, oh here we go. Yes. Yes. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> okay. So, um, so part of that became, uh, I don't know if you can see it back here. There are a couple, there are three books. Uh, there are five books altogether in the Young Wit book series. We finally had the last two books out of the, Young, of the Young Wit book series. And the first five uh, books, there, we have more books planned, but this is the first story arc that we have. And it's yes. all complete now. And so we released these things a couple of, through the past couple of years, they've been released, books one and two. And now finally books uh, one, two, and three, and books four and five are out uh, now as of, as of, uh, August the 8th. I don't know when this is going to air. I don't know when okay. this podcast is going to be put out, but as of August the 8th, you can order these from Focus on the Family. This is the book four is called Young Wit and the Fantabulous Confabulator. And, uh, <laughs> Love and it. it's, uh, it's, it's a, it's a fan fantastic confabulator. And then uh, this is Young Wit and the Cloth of Contention. This is book five. This wraps up the series. Uh, I was telling you, I was, I was, as I was telling you before we, uh, before we started, uh, this one's a little bit thicker than, I don't know if you can see how thick. Oh, look at that. I love it. This we love a thick book about wit. That's so, awesome. So, and this is all about, it's all about young wit, all these series about young wit. So a lot of the stuff that I did going back to, um, going back to uh, uh, the, the creation of wit, a lot of the stuff that I did, I thought, well, we're never going to see this stuff. You know, it'll be, it'll just be background and everything, especially for wit. But as it turns out, no, there's a lot of the stuff that I was I was writing at that point that I really thought, you know, I always wanted to do a book series about young wit, who, yeah. he, who he was, and why why he why he became the person that he became, and who he is, and who he was as a boy, and um, and so we finally got the chance to do that, uh, you know, a couple of years ago. That focus finally said, yeah, let's do it, and so we went, okay, great, and so Dave Arnold and I wrote the books. Um, you see Dave Arnold's name down there yep. at the bottom, and. Um, uh, they're, they're, they're so much fun. I love the covers of these books. These these books, the first three books just have artwork on the cover and the front cover. These books actually have artwork that, that expands. Look at that. Oh, that's the, awesome. The, the front and back covers. Okay. Oh, who did your uh, art on that? Was that? Yeah. Uh, that that's uh, Sergio. I, I forgot his last name, but he, he's great. He's really, really wonderful. Good stuff, it, man. It, that's really, awesome. really super stuff. Same thing with this with this book you can see this front front and back cover is all oh look at that that covers so you got oh it's so rich guy. i love There's it the I mysterious it. guy here and then on the inside this is what i always tell people too when we're doing book signings too on the inside of all the books we have the town where uh where wit grew up there's a place called yes Tomlin, north carolina and so oh, we that's have awesome. all this, uh, this is where he grew up this is you can see his house you can see all the, all the stuff and everything and oh, man. i'm geeking things. out here <laughs> In the in the in the in this map here and along the edges, yeah. and all over the place, there are clues as to what's happening in the story. They're Come all on. throughout. They're all throughout the story. Like little Easter map. eggs kind of thing? Little Easter egg things. You can look around, you can see little Easter egg things all the way throughout. Uh, the one that I like to tell everybody is you gotta gotta look at the trees down in the corner because the trees down in the corner, the branches spell out things. So you've got to be able to <laughs> you got to be able to look at stuff. Yeah, it's really awesome. It's really, really uh, uh, wonderful. Oh, I love it. Oh, that's fascinating. Oh, man. Okay, so Young Wit. We got to get so Young, young Wit. Yeah, and, awesome. and this one, this one especially, uh, I just want to say the last book in the series also has, by the way, yeah. So you see there's some snow on the ground still on this one. You can see, kind of see it. Yep. There's a little mm -hmm. snow on the ground. And then on this one, we're, we're full bore into spring, so there's no snow on the ground. Oh, that's cool. Book three, it's all snow covered. It's just the whole place is snow covered. But in this one especially, look at the, there's there's a little I think it's uh yeah there's you, you gotta you get the book you can see yeah. right in here it's you can't see it in here because it's too small but there's 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 a clue 
written. There's a bunch of clues and it's in code and it's in right, right along here. So you have to read the book and you have to figure out what the code means, what the code is. So there's all sorts of fun stuff. Uh, the, the stories themselves are fantastic. We've had a, such a great time writing these things. And yeah. then there's all sorts of little fun little Easter eggs inside the books themselves. So Young uh, Wit, get the Young Wit books. Young Wit, awesome, awesome. Um, thank you for sharing that. Now, interesting when you talk about where, where Wit grew up, but yeah. um, what was, now I, I remember you talking about this, about what was your inspiration for, and thanks for sharing that. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, you were sharing about your inspiration uh, for Odyssey, the town of Odyssey, and you told me about Klamath Falls, where you did yeah, some going up. Right. Could, tell us a little yeah. bit about what's the connection, was, what's inspiration for the town of Odyssey? Yeah, I was, I was born in Klamath Falls, Oregon. It's just mm -hmm. right on the California border. Beautiful, beautiful little town, about 16,000 people. And, uh, and, uh, my grandparents were there and my aunts and uncles were all close by and, um, again, surrounded by farm country, a lot of timber. Um, there's a, there's a, uh, crater, crater lake is one of the, uh, one is close by there. Yeah. And it's, it's a, it's a, a fresh, uh, one of the clearest, most pure freshwater lakes there is in the world. Um, it's, it's very deep. It's like when a meteor hit and everything, the rain filled it up and it's so clear and pure that you can go out to the middle of it, look all the way down and see all And it's, you know, several, several hundred feet down, but you can see all the way down to the bottom, um, it, when the sun is right. And it's just, just gorgeous. It's, and so I grew up, I grew up around there and, and, um, loved it, loved it a lot. And, um, and so my memories, a lot of the memories that I have until, until we were about, until I was about six years old, then we moved here where I'm living, um, I'm, I moved to California, stayed there for a while. Now I'm back here in Arizona. I'm 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 living here in Arizona now. Yeah, near Tucson, just southeast of Tucson. Yeah. But um, but we had to. My dad had asthma, real bad oh. asthma, and and the moist climate of uh, of uh, Oregon just wasn't good for him. He would have he would have died a lot sooner than he did if we had stayed mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. So we had to move here. There's a lot of this is a dry heat, and that's very very good for asthmatics. And so um, we, the, I grew up here. My formative years were here in, in in Arizona, but I still have fond fond memories of the little town that I was born in, Klamath Falls, Oregon. And so a lot of that, yeah, a lot of that went into the creation of Odyssey too. I was just trying to remember. Now it's interesting because um, I'd set that down as kind of a, a foundation. Klamath Falls, kind of the foundation of everything. And everybody always asks, where's Odyssey? Where is Odyssey? Right, I don't right, know yeah. where Odyssey is on a map. And, well, Odyssey's in here. So don't, you know, don't, please don't drive your car into my head. Uh, <laughs> SF, there was a lady who wrote in, she said, I really want to know where Odyssey is because we're planning our family vacation and I'd really like to go there. And I said, well, I don't think that your car will fit in my head. <laughs> uh, so I really can't, can't tell you that. I mean, Odyssey is where you want it to be. Odyssey is, that's, that's the whole idea behind it. Yeah. So Odyssey is, Odyssey is where you want it to be. Uh, you you get to you get to choose how it looks and how it how it you know how it feels and the texture and that's the whole that's the magic of audio drama. We just provide yes. you the soundtrack. You get to provide the picture. It's a very very yes. interactive interactive thing that we're trying wow. to do here. So, um, but at any rate, uh, uh, a lot of Klamath Falls went into it, and then and then when Paul McCusker came on. Uh, he grew up in a small town in Maryland called Bowie, Bowie, Maryland, and so a lot of the stuff that he was bringing to it. So we have the East Coast and the West Coast, East Coast small town and West Coast small town, and we were bringing them both together uh, to try to create this, you know, to try to develop this. I'd already created it, but it, it, the development of it was part Bowie, Maryland, and part, you know, Clam Falls, Oregon. Oh, that's so, great. So, uh, you know, and and we just had different, we, we were, we were, it was really funny because we just had um, so many different types of uh, thing. He said he, there was an episode where he uh, early on where he had one of the characters running through a bunch of people's backyards. And I'm like, you can't do that. You can't just have character running through somebody else's backyard. He goes, why not? We did it all the time in Bowie. And I said, well, we never did it in Klamath Falls. And so that was a big argument. <laughs> <laughs> so we'd have those those kinds of things, right down to small details like that. I mean, that was that was that was what we and and that was most of our day. Those were very fun days. Those early days of Odyssey because. Uh, so much of it was just conversation, conversation, conversation. Paul spent, Paul and I just spent hours upon hours in each other's offices, arguing and arguing, and, you know, talking and arguing. And Chuck Bolte's office was, you know, his executive producer was down from ours and he'd come in and say, will you stop talking and start writing? And like, <laughs> you, don't, you don't understand. This is writing. This is what. Yes. Writing. Yes. You're creating the world. You, yeah. The yeah, real world. Of it. This is, this is typing. <laughs> This stuff is typing. Writing yes. happens in here. Writing happens. Yes, yes. Writing happens through 
uh, through research. And to Paul, to Chuck's credit, I mean, I don't think he ever really fully agreed with us, but um, he was like Harry Harry Warner of Warner Brothers, who would walk yeah. by the writers' department, you know, and he didn't hear typewriters clicking. You know, they weren't writing if he didn't hear <laughs> typewriters clacking. So somebody got smart one day and just recorded a bunch of typewriters, and then they would play that all day long, and then they would go off and have coffee, and, <laughs> and writer, writers would go off and get drunk somewhere while the typewriter was clacking in the back. And Harry and Harry thought, okay, everything is great. <laughs> Everything's cool. Hey Phil, um, what was that like? Take me to the the first time you heard your show on the radio tell me take me to that time do you remember what that you know, was? no it's it, you know it's kind of weird um uh, I, I i must confess that i don't really listen to the show i i it's very strange I, I i don't know what it is i don't i don't i don't really want to listen to the Why show is that? On the, on, I, Why I don't is know that? it's weird <laughs> I, I spend so much time working on the scripts trying to get yeah. the script done and trying to, to you know do the the creation of it yeah yeah that that i think like uh, you know aside from the playback mm -hmm. um so so i'd hear the playback but the playback li literally now you know we're, we're approaching a thousand episodes wow and literally many of the shows most of the shows uh, the last time i heard them was when we did the playback um, wow wow the last time i ever heard them so um uh now now I, i'll make a caveat there when my son got old enough to start listening to odyssey he was born the year i i started creating odyssey so he he's as old as odyssey is wow 87 so, yeah. is that right he, he was born in 86 okay 86 so, so, it, so it, i started started creating it in 86 oh started creating, creating it okay it but it hit, so yeah started creating it in 86 he was born in july of 86 mm -hmm. and so he's 30 he's the yeah, he's 37 so um he'll be 30 uh, 38 next year but um yeah, so he is as old as Odyssey. So I was like, whenever I created the show, it was like, I hope this lasts long enough for him to actually start listening to it when he gets to the target oh. audience. And man, right on cue. I mean, we couldn't have planned it better. Right on cue. When he turned eight years old, it was like, I'm listening to this. Yep, I'm really into it. Wow, this is fantastic. This is so great. This is so wonderful. He was really, really, really into it. Listen to it right until he turned into a teenager. And then it was like, okay, I'm done. <laughs> oh, <laughs> wow. did his own Think so I was like, oh, that that was that was good. We planned that right. <laughs> well, so, well, go ahead, go ahead. But so I, I so you say so uh, the, the caveat that I would put in there is that when he started listening to them, his his my office was right next to his bedroom at that point, and uh, I I would hear him playing it on his tape player. You know, he had a tape player back yeah, then, yeah. and I would I would hear him playing it. On, well, I guess it was CD player. And I would hear, you know, the episodes that he was playing and, you know, and I would only kind of half listen to it. So I wasn't really listening, listening, but I would hear things every once in a while um, about it. Then the, the only other time that I've actually heard it on the air was usually when we were on a trip, we were on a road trip. My wife and I would be going on a trip You here to California. You know, we live in California. We'd come back here to Arizona. And as we were driving along, we're trying to find something on the radio. We would, you know, hit the scan button and do it, do it, do it. And one time my wife was hitting the scan button and I heard something and I went, oh, well, go back, go back, go back. So she went <laughs> back and and it was Odyssey. It was, they were oh. playing in a, an Adventures in Odyssey episode on, mm. on the local station. And I thought, I thought the, the thing that got me from that, and, and it was, it was one of my episodes. And I was like, oh, that's really fun. I haven't heard this in years. So I listened to it. And I, yeah, it was really pretty good. <laughs> I, was, <laughs> I, I had forgotten all the frustrations yeah. of actually making the thing happen. Yes. And I just listened to it for what it was. It was really, it was really good. And, and and then what really struck me though, what really struck me about that was Odyssey is unlike anything else on the air. It doesn't sound like anything else. Out yes, there. Anything yes. Else completely different. And, and all it takes is just go and buy it rapidly in a scanner, you know, because the scanner will stop on a station for literally a nanosecond and then go on to the next station, yeah, the next yeah. station. But all you have to hear is that much of it. And you realize there's some, wait, wait, what was that? That doesn't sound yes. like anything else that's on the air. Go yes. back. And it sounds completely different. It, and, you know, that that's partly um, partly the writing, partly the acting, partly a great portion of that, of course, is the sound design and music. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, because that, that's the presentation of the of the show. But it just doesn't sound like anything else on, on the air. Yes. And, and it really does yes. grab your attention. It's like right away, it grabs your attention. You go, wow, that's that's really amazing. That's really incredible. Well, so, so uh, I, I thank God for that. I think that was God, that was kind of by design. I think we really wanted to do that early, early, early on, even though, even though we didn't actually kind of know, know that we were doing it. It was really kind of fun. Well, I got to say, just it, it, this ties in with what you're just saying there. I really appreciate, um, this is back in the the 80s when there's a lot of Christian stuff is just schlocky, cheesy, <laughs> just, oh, 
it was especially for kids. There's a yeah. mentality is, oh, it's for kids, so they'll they'll watch anything. It's like, yeah. no, 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 no. It's yeah. for kids. You give the kids the best. And, yeah. and give me what I just I want to thank you for just that sense of excellence that you brought to the show. It's like you set a high bar back when the bar was, you know, it was pretty, but you set a high bar for that show early on of excellence. I just want to thank you for that. And and, well, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, that's, that was, that was very much uh, intentional. That was very, very much intentional. Um, I mean, I don't want to, I don't want to put anything else down. All of those shows uh, fulfilled their purpose, but you're right. I think that there was a, I think that there was a mindset um, of whether conscious or, or subconscious mindset that a it's for kids and mm-hmm. b uh, Christian audiences are really really forgiving. Oh, so it doesn't oh. Have to be. we see that in films now, to. right? It's like doesn't, doesn't we're plotting our cousin, you know. It's like it's like yeah, yeah. It doesn't have to be great. I, you know, yeah. good. I, you know, they bless them. They did a good job there you because go. you know their intentions were good. Yeah. Well, you know, no, that's not really right. I mean, I, that we we said early on we want this to be. I very very much remember. Um, writing out mission statement kind of things for Odyssey, um, uh, inter- internal mission statements, but even things that would go out to to the regular public and to the public. And I would, it was very much like I, we. I want this to be. We want to take a Warner Brothers cartoon approach to Odyssey. That's what, that's what I used to say. So there's something for everybody at every yes. age level. You can get something out of it. So if you're really really small, you like the funny voices, you like the music, you like the brightness of it, and you get a little older and you realize, oh, there's something else going on here. Oh, and yes. you get a little older, you could follow the story, you get a little older, you realize there's a whole lot of depth here and you get a little older. And and what's very gratifying is after 36 years, 30 36 37 years, I will get messages from people saying, "I I listened to Odyssey. I I've listened to this episode of Odyssey all my life, literally." And I never realized this thing until I listened to it today. And I'm wow. I'm in, I'm middle aged now. I've been listening to this wow. all my life, and I never re- I never got that part of it until today. I'm like, yes, isn't that? Oh Thank man, you. that's 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 beautiful. all purposeful. That's all by yes. design. The whole idea behind it was that we knew um, one of the things that we knew being uh, as a young parent. I definitely knew this, but I also just knew it. Uh, because I have younger brothers and sisters, kids like to play things over and over and over and over and over again. They never get tired of hearing it. Yes. Well, we thought, well, if the kids are going to be playing these things over and over and over again, then let's put something in there for the parents as well. <laughs> yes. So, so yes, yes. Let's yeah. entertain the parents as well. Yes. Let's put something oh, in there so for them. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and and that was what the whole Warner Brothers cartoon approach that I, I called it was 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 all about. So we really, yeah. really wanted to do that. And the other thing that I very much remember writing down, it's in the archive somewhere, but it was I want to raise uh, I, I personally a goal of mine is to use this show to raise the whole um, art form of audio drama. Yes. Wow. Raise wow. the standards of the art form of audio drama because I had done our audio drama prior to prior to to working at Focus on the Family. What, what shows? What shows? Audio. It, it was just local stuff in California. Yeah, yeah. It was on the yeah, local yeah. PBS and local um, mm-hmm. I, I stations, the the yeah. local uh, NPR stations, and and there, there was nothing really big, nothing really great. But the way it was done, the way we did it, was very old fashioned. It mm-hmm. was. It was uh, it was like out of the 1930s, 1940s, which means that you had turntables, mm-hmm. yeah. vinyl records to do the sound effects. It was all done to time, so you had to time the scripts. You had there was no wow. editing of of the stuff. There was no mm-hmm. you know you had to if you made a mistake, you had kept going. You know yeah, stuff yeah. like that. And and while those were fun to do and taught us a whole taught me a whole lot about the art form itself. I thought, isn't there a way for us to make this better? Can't we? Yes. Can't we oh wow! Phil. Pull this into yeah. the, pull this into the twentieth century. Can't we pull this into the, into the age of you know yes. great production, audio production, and stuff? You know, and and that, and so uh, one of the things that Chuck that we that we did that Steve was part of this too. That it was all a part of that was yeah yeah let's do that let's let's make this better let's better let's 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 worry about mic placement let's worry about. Uh, appropriate sound effects. Let's worry about all this. Let's do post production on it. Let's just not stop with okay, we recorded this live and it's to time, and so now we've got it and it's there. And now we'll send it on out. Let's make it work. Let's make it work. Oh, and Chuck, I think Chuck Bolte wow. was the one who who said, "Let's what we're doing here is the soundtrack to a motion picture." Yes, 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 yes. Let's, let's do the, I, let's I never, do the soundtrack yes. to a motion picture. That's and, so cool. Make it make it that good. 
that quality. Oh uh, man, that quality, and and then you know then whatever else happens happens. But uh, uh, and, and so that that really did uh, that really did become the the standard for us. That was what we were really trying to do: raise the art. And and Dave Arnold was the one who really pushed that. Bob Latrell was is is wonderful. Dave and Bob were the ones who really did that. But Dave, I, but Dave, I think even took it. He was the one who started that push to push just a higher, level. St- higher level. Wow. He would take, I mean, he would really get in there and take stuff and really start looking at it and how does this work and what's going on and uh, all the Foley and all the other stuff, yes. the appropriate sound effects and whatnot. He was, you know, mic placement, placement of the f- sounds within yes. the Yes, yes, yes. All the know, things like that. And that was that Dave was just awesome Man. in that way. And now, now I think I think we've got you know I think it's the best stuff in the business. I think. It's yes, the, yes, I'm it. geeking out because you know, like I say, I wrote for the show, but I, I'm also an Aussie fan and a fan of audio drama. And this, I'm learning stuff I I didn't know behind the scenes. This is fascinating to me. Just a personal connection here. So you've got excellence in the sound design, yeah. excellence in the production and the music with John Campbell. Just just wonderful, oh, yeah. just wonderful stuff, rich stuff. And then um, you've got excellence with story. So you've got the 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 the, the, the mechanical part of it, whatever it is that. But you also have excellent story, and you combine yeah. those two, and it's an experience you don't get anywhere else. And I, yeah. I remember um, just tying in the, the personal connection here. I'm going to go a little larger story before you, where you end. Is um, I remember I was on the interstate. I was listening to a show you wrote. It's called The Painting. I don't know what it is about that show. Um, I mean, several ones I've listened to have really touched me. And I was about to move to Colorado from uh, Mobile, Alabama. And I, I had, um, um, I'm listening to the show and it struck me in a way I didn't expect. And I started weeping and I really, and God spoke to me through the show and th- you were the inspiration for me changing my name. Oh, uh, wow. Yeah. So my last name, I had a, a, a last name, adopted my stepdad's name. And yeah. I felt like I need to go back to my the name I was born with was, which is mm-hmm. off. Mm-hmm. And so I went, because of your show, your show changed my life. Your show changed wow. my name. And wow. it was, God spoke to me through that show. And it's just like personal connection. Just, I want to thank you for that. Just like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's a good thing, right? <laughs> yeah. It's, it's a good thing. Yeah. yeah that's a good thing. Um, <laughs> yeah, it changed my yeah, life I, worse. I became a drunk after I, I listened to your show. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> You know, you know, I changed uh, my life for the better, Phil, and I thank you for that. Yeah. There's something it's, it's interesting because uh, 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 there was a time when um, cu- a couple of things happened in the history of Odyssey that that tie into that that sort of thing. Uh, for the most part, Paul and I were just trying to get uh, in the early days. Paul and I were just trying to get scripts done. Yeah, I mean, we were just we're okay. So now, our I, I think interrupt for just a moment. Our very astute story chat listeners, as you listen in, you'll hear Phil's shirt has actually changed and mine as well. <laughs> and that is because we were both uh, in the middle of our show. It's the first time it's ever happened. We were struck by lightning. Uh, not directly, but it was it was uh, <laughs> it was not a direct hit, but it hit the show and we power went out. It was very dramatic. Maybe I'm making it a little bit too dramatic, but anyway. <laughs> to continue 24 hours I, I, later. I don't know you know if, if, if this is god telling us to not talk about whatever we were talking about <laughs> that, you know, forbidden pretty <laughs> big yeah so we were to to continue we were, yeah that could be that's it could be a sign so phil you're <laughs> talking about just the power of the stories with odyssey and and i remember you said yeah in the early days paul and i were just 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 writing scripts and 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 right what, then, then what? <laughs> well, I, well, one one thing it was it was it, it was very interesting uh, because uh, we um, at first we were just we were filling slots. Okay, so a, 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 a series is a monster that needs to be fed. You got to put out a lot of material. You got to keep writing stuff. And so we were just writing, 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 writing um, uh, lots of different things. But um, uh, what was what was interesting was Paul at one point said. Um, I, I I think I think we had gotten a letter from someone who uh, talked about how some of the stories that we had done had really changed their their life. Oh wow! And and it was like the first time that we really saw a lot of the mail that was coming in as oh, a result wow. of of Odyssey. So it was like physical mail it was an email back then. It was all physical letters, and it would go through because Focus got a lot of those in those days, and and Focus would they they would go through and 
I, I read them all and, and answer them. They had a whole correspondence department, still do have a whole correspondence yeah. department that does nothing but answer letters. And uh, and lots of people work down there. But every once in a while, they'd get a letter that they would send up to I individual departments if something really profound had happened. And somebody had said that they uh, they came they came to, to to know Jesus because of our our one of our podcast one of our uh, audio dramas. Wow! And and so that that was like I I was like I I don't know if I want that responsibility. <laughs> I mean, wow! That's a that's a pretty big responsibility right there. And and so wow. we we were talking about it. Paul and I were talking about it. I said we, you know we're just we're just messing around here. A lot of what we're doing is just messing around here. We're just trying to we're just trying to uh, you know write stories that are fun and entertaining and whatnot. And and uh, and he said, you know, this is this is this is what happened with the Beatles too. Um, he said there was a, there was a story where I, I guess uh, uh, you know people were taking their lyrics really really seriously. Oh. And, and and John appeared on a, a talk show and they were talking about the meaning behind the lyrics and all the other stuff. And John said, we're just playing with words. All we're doing is just playing with words. We don't, you know, don't don't take this more seriously than it is. But but we couldn't we couldn't stop there. We couldn't, you know, we could we had we obviously had a different calling on this on this stuff. But because there's a there's a different calling than even even what the Beatles had. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, but 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 at first those early years were were kind of fun. I I um, G K Chesterton wrote a a a. a an analysis i don't want to say it's a biography but it was an analysis of charles dickens work and charles oh, yeah. dickens has gone in and out of favor over the years he was you know yeah. very very popular at one point and then he kind of went out of favor and then mm -hmm. very very popular and then went out of favor and at one point uh people thought he was a real hack you know just a, a kind of a hack writer and then he kind wow. of came back in came back into prominence um at, around the time of chesterton which is the turn of the last century and and one of the things that chesterton wrote that i thought was really interesting um, and, and really applies to me. I, I can't speak for Paul, but especially in those early days, but it really applies to me. It still still does. Is um, people were wondering about uh, the audience that he wrote for. You know, did he did he did he, and and, uh, and Chesterton said that Dickens didn't really care. It's evident from reading Dickens that he didn't really care about the audience. Hmm. Dickens Dickens was the audience. Oh. Dickens didn't oh, cool. care about writing for an audience. He was the audience. Okay. Wow. So he was writing. So the point, the point was that he was writing things that he wanted to read. He was wow. writing things that he liked, that he wanted to read. Yeah. And, 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 and I thought, you know what, that's really, that's really applicable for, for wow. me. I, again, I can't speak for Paul. I can't speak for anybody else. Um, I, I am, I feel like I'm writing, I'm the audience. I want I want a story that I'm interested in reading. I want a story that I'm interested. I want to write a story that I'm interested in reading. I want to write a story I'm interested in hearing. Mm. You know that that's that's what I really really want to do. And and we were writing so fast in those early days. I think <laughs> that that's really what, what yeah we were, what we were all about. We were just what uh, what what do we what what makes us laugh? What makes us cry? Yes. What makes what kind of stories do we like? What do we want to see? What do we want to hear? Um, you know how, how do, what do we want to read? Um, it, 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 it kind of, it's, it's similar to the whole apocryphal, I think it's probably an apocryphal story that, um, that, that Lewis and, and, uh, Tolkien were talking together and Lewis finally turned to Tolkien and said, you know, one of them turned to the other one, I don't know who it was and said, <clears throat> you know, um, the only way that we're going to read these stories that we like is if we write them. Mm, well, the only way yeah, is, I'm, yeah. I'm paraphrasing yeah, yeah, yeah. But the idea behind it is you know we love these kinds of stories we love these kinds of um, yeah. uh, gothic uh, not gothic but mythical tales and, yeah yeah and big 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 things with the um, you know with the with the German opera whatever it is you know he, they loved all those kinds of Norse mythology and all that sort yes, of stuff yeah yeah and the only way we're going to be able to read these nobody's writing these things and the only way we're going to be able to read them is if we write them now Good. you know again i don't know if that's true or not but it's but it's uh, uh i think that there's a truth in there yeah yeah I think as yeah. a writer as a writer in general you have to like what you're writing you have to love what you're writing and 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 it, it has to be the kind of thing that you want to read and you want to hear and you want to you want yeah see. that makes so much um, sense can you tell us um you're talking about the impact of the story <laughs> just a little bit just a moment ago can you tell us is there a story that stands out to you of 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 somebody that was like a story that stands out that just like wow 
it just is impacted. There's so many that came in. I remember when I was writing, I, I loved getting those letters. That was part of my pay. You know, to yeah, me, it's like, yeah. oh wow. But can you? Is there is one that stands out to you? I, you know, I, I don't. I don't really have one. One in particular that stands out. There, there, mm -hmm. there are there are several that I really, uh, uh, really enjoyed writing. And I, I yeah. like the writing process. I really like the process of yes. it. So when I'm in the middle of it. I really enjoy it. I, 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 I don't. Uh, I'm not. I'm not a person who is who's one of those people who likes having written. I like being in the middle of it. Yes. Yes. The it's the joy um, of doing it. Yes. The joy. Uh, of, the joy of creation is really fun, even though it's very frustrating. It can be very, very difficult and very trying. I'm in the middle right now of a project that's very, very trying and very difficult. Yeah. Um, but yet still, it's just like this is this is the part of the process. This is part of the enjoyment of the process. Um, um, and I'm kind of breaking my my own little rule there because this this story is I, I don't really like the story so I'm just, but I'm still working on it at any rate that, <laughs> I'll put that aside. So work, so work for hire. It's a work for hire. <laughs> you know, I don't really like the story all that much, but I'm working on it anyway. At any rate, um, but but I, I think that I think that there are lots of different different kinds of stories. So there was a story I wrote about Jimmy. It was called Coming of Age. It's about Jimmy Barkley when he's when he's getting too old i guess yes be, yes uh, yeah 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 kind of, that that that's one another jimmy barkley one was uh, someone to watch over me which they which they did I as a video loved really that one that. it was that so was, yeah that was that was a story that i first wrote uh, when i was in film school and i adapted it for odyssey and it was about basically it's about a guy who's being chased by death throughout I, all these different scenarios oh and, uh, man i got chilled on just thinking about that yeah. show. that's so and well done I, I i really i really enjoyed i really enjoyed writing that one i th there's there are many many the, the the very first one that i really enjoyed uh, as i i look back and i think oh that was such an enjoyable experience because it showed me what i could do with the program yeah was uh, the tangled web it was yes. really early early on and um and so I was, I was working on it, and it was one of those things that I was actually writing literally the night before we recorded it. I was, <laughs> I was working on it. Yeah, we, we were we were that close, at that and uh, and uh, so I I was working on it, and and uh, and and I thought I knew where I was going with it. I thought I knew what was going to happen because if you know if you remember the story, the, the, Connie wants to do something that she knows her mom doesn't want her to do, and so she's going to go around behind her mom's back, and Wit gives Connie a story to read about a little boy who did the same thing it's about a lie that gets out of hand yeah and and uh and and the it gets bigger and bigger and it's more comical it gets bigger and bigger and the problem gets bigger and bigger and um uh, and then uh, to the point where this boy uh is 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 uh being uh being celebrated as a hero in front of his little town he's going to be given a, an award and and it's all based on a lie, a complete yes. lie. He knows it is based on a lie, and so the pressure is on. The pressure is mounting. This is really getting bad. This is really getting bad. And I remember distinctly writing this as I'm writing, and I really remember distinctly I'm just writing it out, writing it out, and I thought, wait a minute, I don't want to. I I, I was going to go in a direction where he has to, you know, he confesses, he blows up. No, it wasn't me. It was I it was it was a lie. The whole thing is a lie. And I thought, why do that? Let's see what we can. Let's go the other direction. Oh yes. So, so he he did it. He wrote it. He he, he accepted the award. He got sat down, and and everybody applauded. And everybody was great. And he went he went on, and 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 that was it. And and then just the reaction of Connie, going, wait a minute, that's <laughs> he got away with it. Yeah. What you know? Uh -huh. I thought. See, this is good. This is good. We can do yes. more with this. We can do more with this kind of thing now. We can we can mess around with uh, with with ethics and and whatnot and and uh and and i really also just loved the end part of that when bob luttrell did the with the, the audio uh, all the sound effects and stuff because and it was all written i wrote it all out exactly the way i wanted it and he did it he did it right to a t which was you know wit says see you later think about it see you later either way i'll see you on monday whatever you're going to do and then i wrote out and there's a pause like a music cushion footsteps over to the telephone receiver lifts up number dials all sound effects number dials and then connie says hello mom and that's the end yes yes and, yes uh, and I, went, I thought that that i like I, you know that <gasps> now we're starting to get into what this medium can really do in terms of storytelling yes. through sound effects and through music and through not just dialogue but sound effects and music and, and and you know it was like ooh that was <laughs> you kind of get a nice shiver down your spine. Ooh, <laughs> really the, the, uh, uh, maybe one maybe two more that stand out um, uh, and they're more recent ones. I was sick as a dog uh, about three or four years ago. I had the worst flu I've ever had in my life. I thought I, I you know I used to wonder how can people die of the flu, 
in, in this modern age. But then when I got this flu, I was like very, very sick. It was just pre-COVID. It was right before COVID. Wow. And yeah. I was very, very sick. And and yet I had deadlines. You know, I still had I still had two scripts that I was working on. And when I'm really, really sick, for some reason, I'm really, really productive. Because I really? wrote both of, I wrote both of those scripts in like a week. <laughs> I wrote, I wrote, I wrote, I wrote them uh, very fast, very, very fast. Wow. And, uh, uh, and, uh, the one that really stood out for me, there's there, the, the, the two, um, let's see, the one that really stood out that I remember very distinctly was the toy. It was a more, yes. more so yes. I was, I was six of the dog when I wrote that. I wrote that in two, I wrote that in two days and three, uh, two and a half days. And I was in bed. I mean, I was just in bed. Is that the I, Twilight I, Zone really, one? Is that the one where the, no, 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 no. Oh, it's no, a different it's, one. It's a, it's a newer one. It's a newer one. Oh, it's a newer version. Okay, I got it. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's, it's okay. It's, sorry, um, it's, it's like 20, 2017, something like that. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Um, so it, 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 it basically what, what it is is Detective Polehouse is gathering up a bunch of people. Um, he's, he's going from person to person in Odyssey, and, and it's all these characters that we, we know and love. So he's got Wooten and he's got uh, Jason and oh, Wit yes, and, yes, okay, and, uh, and, uh, uh ed washington from the from the yes. carlsville witten and he gathers them all at the police station because he wants to talk to them and and also um, a doctor at the at the um yeah yeah yeah, yeah. doctor at the, uh-huh. at the odyssey hospital and he's gathering them all together and and you, you were thinking that there's some sort of criminal activity because this this little boy died um this little boy died and so yes, they're, yes, yeah, yes. they're thinking that you know and he had this he had this stuff bear the stuffed doll or whatever and each of the people that were involved had something to do with that little boy Wow. And what you find out at the end is that that boy was uh, Pole House's nephew, and he died of cancer. Wow! And and he just wanted to gather everybody together and say thank you because this little yeah. toy, this little oh, toy wow. that he yeah. had, was the thing that kept him comforted while he was in the worst, awful, yes. awful pain. I remember and, this. Yeah. And I, I, as I'm writing the end of that, especially, I'm just, I'm just weeping. I'm like, oh yes. my gosh. Oh, oh man. Just, I'm just yeah. weeping. Yeah. Because I was based on a story. It was it was based on a, 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 an internet thing that I had I had seen. I was scrolling again and research. I'm constantly doing research all the time. And um, this was based on something that uh, apparently in the 9/11 museum in in where the towers were, there's a stuffed animal in there, and it was somebody's somebody, somebody oh. some little kid was in that in that building. I know it's, uh, it's like oh my gosh. Oh my God. Oh, man. And I thought, I thought, I thought, as I watched that, I thought, I, as I looked at that, I thought, uh, what a, what an incredible thing. What if you were um, a worker and this, this, the, this doll was not, this was stuffed animal was not, it was like a manufactured thing. It wasn't like hand sewn or anything like that. It was just something you'd buy off the shelf in the store. But what if you were one of the people who made those? in the factory and you recognized it there was some way that you could recognize that yes, this was yes. this was a toy that i wow that i made that i had a hand in me i i was responsible for gluing the eyes on on this toy <laughs> so i have this i have this what i consider to be incredibly mundane boring job making these things that are you know the kids are going to play with for a little while and then tear up and then throw away and then you see this, this stuffed animal in a museum, in the 9-11 museum, and you realize that this was probably the last thing that that little person ever saw and, and provided them with comfort in the most terrifying moment of their life. Mm, 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 mm. Oh, and man. Sudden, suddenly your job doesn't seem so mundane anymore, does yes, it? Yes, yes, yes. Ah, man, oh, would that, man. that's... That's that would be unbelievably profound. I would I if I were that person walking through there and knew that I worked in that factory that made that stuffed animal, I would be like, oh my gosh, that oh, this oh, is man. I mean, just to think on, on those that that's when you get story, you know, you realize that that that's something else. Something else is going on. That's just not me looking around for story material. That there's something else going on there. Yeah, I, oh, those moments. Oh, that's that's yeah. oh. 
Yeah, we, if you if you can get those things every once in a while, and I never I never really rely on inspiration. You never you should never rely on inspiration as a writer. You should just sit down and start writing. You should right. you, you mm -hmm. put your rump in the seat and start writing. Yep. Oh yeah. But but uh, but when things like that happen, you realize oh. there's there's something supernatural going oh, on. There. I that's, love that. Yeah, that's, that's that inspiration. Yeah, which yeah. I, I think the original what's it, the original Greek for inspir inspiration is something on like breath. There's something like one God. Yeah, breathing God, writing. God breathe. Yeah, yeah. God I, breathe. I love what you're talking about. When you're, I remember I was writing something, uh, I was writing a show, some audio drama, and um, I was in a coffee shop. I'm just weeping, you know? Yeah. I I know. A bunch of girls, like a teenage girls, or you kind of get a glance. He's like, it's okay. I'm just, I know. I know. <laughs> I'm okay. Yeah. I'm just writing something. Don't worry about it. I'm just writing something. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me. I just, what? just what's that? Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, just, just to wrap up, Phil. What, what, uh, what's something about Odyssey that uh, people don't know that you would? It's like it's, it's this little known fact. Like people don't realize whatever or something you would like to share about Odyssey. There's kind of a little, a little corner of odyssey people don't know about or anything you'd like to share like a little secret a little, little curiosity or anything like that it's I, like... I i i don't know if we have those that haven't been revealed already i think okay. there may there most of those i think most of those things have probably been revealed okay. um i i did so take I, I know i know that we're trying to we're trying to come up with more i mean for me i like the idea of odyssey you know of 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 wits in being bigger on the inside than it is on the outside mm -hmm. and and then going to the to the imagination station it's the same kind of thing that really makes what's in bigger oh yeah 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 well, well is there something that i have not asked you that you would like me to ask you about odyssey <laughs> no. i would love somebody to ask me this question just if they would just ask this question is there a question no like I, I i honestly i really don't i don't think i really have anything like that there there's <laughs> there's we we try i've tried to mine as much material as i possibly can from odyssey i think that it's really um you know god again god uh, to God be the glory that that he mm -hmm. that he's given he's given us the capacity to put into Odyssey, uh, you know, just uh, more and more and more stuff, you know, um, uh, that, that we keep going. That it's a thousand episodes. I mean, the 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 one I, I'm sure you know the story about uh, uh, James Dobson meeting Hal Smith in the in the hallway between the studios, and, and you know, and and he said, "I hope you do a thousand of these." That's what. <laughs> That's what Hal said. I hope we do a thousand of these. That oh <laughs> okay. Well, wow. we'll work on that. We'll see what that what that. That's means. oh. And I think I, I think uh, I think Will Ryan echoed that later on. I think I could, Will Will Ryan said something the same. We, we should do a thousand of these. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, that was. I mean, I that 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 was that was that was pretty. Uh, that's that's pretty uh, 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 amazing that God has allowed this to go on. Oh, what what uh, a he keeps going on. Yeah. What a blessing. Well, to wrap us up here for this show, um, Phil, I wanted to ask you something. Uh, mm -hmm. You wrote, and I've seen this, I've seen you post something like this. I saw you post something like this recently. And it's something along the lines of, um, I'm quoting you, so you can tell me, you can correct me here. <laughs> <laughs> I say lots of things. I die. <laughs> and Phil Lawler said this. Yeah. I know. <laughs> you said something like along the lines of, um, You'll never know the, the 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 deep the true joy of working on Odyssey. What what it is? Tell us oh, 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 that a little bit more for me. Yeah, you know what? That was what, a, what, that was actually joy? yeah. That was uh, that was a uh, this is earlier this year um, when I I went back to you know we record out in California uh, uh, at Salami Studios. Yes, uh, we've recorded in lots of different places, but but um, the uh, the the post was I just I had took a little selfie in the studio and the post was uh, the caption was i don't think any of you will ever know how much i love being in the studio oh oh yeah and and uh and what i was basically doing was um but what where that came from was uh, uh that was that was a paraphrase on the last thing that teddy roosevelt ever said um he he went to bed he he built uh, he you know built his he built his mansion in Sagamaw Hill, and he he built his man raised all of his kids there and 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 had a had a one it was a place of refuge for him you know he's a world traveler and he was always constantly going and hard work the strenuous life is his thing, 
And uh, and so one night he would he had just been he just had his his his, uh, his amazing adventure where he was lost literally lost in the Amazon forest or, uh, jungle thought he was going to die he was he was had malaria very bad came back finally came back everybody was really shocked at how uh, how thin he was and how sick he was he was he'd been in the hospital and, and he had come out of the hospital and he was ready to run for president again he was about to run for president president again. But he was reading in his study and finally the time came to go to bed. And he went to bed and upstairs and his wife was already in bed. And he got ready and put his spectacles on the nightstand, climbed into bed next to her. And he said, I wonder if you will ever know how much I love Sagamore Hill. Uh -huh. And he went to sleep and he died. Wow. That was the last thing he ever said. Wow. So so uh, that 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 was... That was me. I tie that to, I, I may have told you this story. I don't remember if I've told you this story. There's a Neil Simon in his biography. I think he wrote a biography and I think it was in his biography, but it starts out with him saying, I own a piece of real estate. It's a piece that I, I own. It's my very own. Nobody else can have it. And it's, it's a piece of real estate that, um, that I have all over America. And he said, it's the piece of real estate is about two feet wide it may be 30 feet long. Um, and it's in the lobby of every theater in America, every every theater, because that's where I pace up and down, up and down when I'm listening to my plays being performed. And I'm trying to hear the timing of the audience. This, this is my my piece. And that's where I that's I, that's the place that I own. I own that strip of of, <laughs> of the lobby. And he said, I'm never happier than when I'm I'm pacing uh, up and down, listening, uh, listening, 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 making notes about the timing, listening, listening. Mm. That's my piece of real estate. That's where I own. Wow. So it's a, so it's a lot of different things that come together. But but um, you know, I think I said earlier in the in this uh, podcast also is is the idea of when you find out where you're supposed to be, when God shows you what you're supposed to be doing, when when he when he tells you who you are and what you're supposed to be doing, you want that to start as soon as possible. <laughs> you <laughs> yes. want that life to start as soon as possible. So I love uh, that. that's that's exactly where that's exactly what I'm I'm thinking to. I this is this is where I'm supposed to be. Oh I'm wow! Supposed to be in this, you know, be in this studio doing this stuff. So, oh man! Well, and I and I and I love it. It's wonderful. I, it shows. It shows your your uh, your joy, your love for what you do shows. And uh, thank you for bringing that to us. You know, bringing that joy to us. And it's something we share when you you share that joy. You, it's, it's it's a joy that's shared. And uh, just thank. Well, I think you. I think you're the same way. I think you're the same way. I think that you you know I see I see. I took a picture of you up there at the lamplighter. Uh, you know, <laughs> where you're standing in the midst of a bunch of young people and they're and you're telling stories man you're just telling stories like this is john in his element this is exactly where he's supposed to be this is what he loves doing so you can tell you can tell when somebody's really their heart is into it and they really really love it this Thank is you. where they're supposed to be buddy miller is the guy we use on jungle jam um, he, he would wrote all the music a lot of the songs yeah. he had julie miller and buddy was the kind of person if you ever if you're ever around buddy you see that when he picks up a guitar, you realize he was born to do this. This oh, is the guy who's, because he yes. picks up a guitar and it is just natural. Yeah. You can see you, there are people who are out there who are like that. Yes. You see stuff and it's like, he was born to do that. This is, this oh, is, yeah. this is yeah. something he was born to do. That's, so, awesome. that's, that's a, awesome. That's a, that's great. To God be the glory. That's great. It's, it's, Amen. It's, Amen. And everybody has that, by the way. Everybody has that. Exactly. So find exactly. It. Yes. Find it. Yes. Find what you're supposed to do. Embrace it. Love it. Go do it. Yes, that's a lot of what this show is about. So thank you. Yeah. So it's it's been great. Thank you so much for being on the show. This is so fun. You're welcome. So fun. My yeah. pleasure. My deep pleasure. Deep joy. Deep joy having you here, man. All right. Blessings to you. And and real quick, uh, we're gonna talk Young Wit. Uh, yep. you, you've got Young Wit books. Those two yep. books just coming out. They're, they're kind of they're they're right all right there, there right, right up in there, right up in there. <laughs> yeah. But uh, they'll be out on August eighth. August eighth. I don't know when this is gonna air, but. August 8th, you can get them at the Focus on the Family Bookstore. I think you can get them on Amazon. I think you can get them everywhere. So okay. those are the final two books, the Fen Wit Young Wit and the Fantasmic Confabulator and Young Wit and the Cloth of Contention. But all five books are now available in this first story arc. So get them, get them, get them. Yes, get them now. Awesome. Fantastic. Thanks, Phil. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Story Chat. If you want to hear more, don't forget to subscribe to the podcast. 
If you have any questions for John or feedback on the show, please email us at storychatwithjohn at gmail.com. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time.